Yo, it's innovate, man. I like the story times. These joints dope. And if and if you're from the D, you can, you know, it's been 20 years, you know. Ain't nobody really fucking with me. So if you're from the, you can, I'm saying shit that you can probably go and research. Like, that nigga, them niggas was in some shit. It was everyday war for us, bro. I've been in more shootouts than niggas been in fights, man. That's why that tough shit, you know, that shit don't translate because I'm too nice. I can't really, the shit I was talking, that niggas ain't ready for that shit. But I'm a, I'm just, I gotta share it now because my name is getting bigger. I gotta let people know who I am. But this one, this is one when God saved me, man. This one is, and it's, there's another story with this guy that I was with. His name is Chris from Detroit. A lot of people know Chris. Really good dude. I hope he's still alive. He's the one that got shot here. He's the one that had the bullets still in his jaw. Every Chris was a real one. What side dude? Got money too. I'm sure he, sure he's. Hope he changed his life like I did, but yeah. Some of these niggas gotta be millionaires now, so I got, but but everybody changed, everybody stopped that, you know? Dudes went legit, brought businesses, brought houses. But this dude saved my life. There's a story I wanted to tell before this on why he saved my life like this. Cause I, cause I got caught with his gun before and I and I had a, and since he put his, I, I had my car, he put his gun under my seat and I had a half ounce in my jacket. So when they found this gun, it made them really search me, and they found the gun and the dope. I ended up getting two years for that shit. I didn't even, he went home the next day, but he never forgot that. And that's why honor, and that's the moral to this, bro. Honor comes back around. When you do real shit for real people, bro, they don't forget that shit. So me and this nigga had trade wins. Trade wins liquor store on Tyreman in Wyoming. I had that parking lot doing about a G a day, just, no, maybe about, I had that parking lot doing a G a day and just rocks. To where niggas was coming from other neighborhoods, like, yo, what the fuck? So Chris was always with me, because he was, Chris was a mean one, bro. So me and Chris was mad cool, so we had the trade win. These niggas from the hood just moved in the hood, come up there with their girl, yo. And this is why these stories are examples of how God saved me. They're, I'm just not telling stories. They're gonna, you're gonna, this is, God saving my life. Um, so man, this nigga, my, my nigga Chris, God bless him. I hope he's still alive. I haven't heard from him in a minute, in years since I left Detroit. But he 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 licks the dude's girl in the mouth, basically. He just goes up to this nigga girl and just licks her in the mouth. So this so I'm outside cleaning the snow off my car. This nigga drives by me with the girl and he calls me he like, you bitch ass nigga. So I'm like, so back then we had 32 ounces. He got far. I'm like, I'm gonna hit the car with the 32 ounce. I threw it, but the car went through the back of the window, hit the girl. I'm like, damn, man. So now I'm thinking like, I ain't know who the nigga was. I'm like, this nigga gonna tell him. This nigga gonna snitch me out. I'm about to get the fuck up out of here and shit. So I, I had my pistol, had my drugs. So I took the pistol home, stashed the drugs. I took the pistol home. I was gonna come back and hustle. I'm like, I just don't wanna get caught with this pistol. Um. I come back, my nigga Smiley, every, everybody knows Smiley in Detroit. My nigga Smiley like, yo, G-Money, them niggas just came and shot this bitch up with an AK, bro. Like, they just shot the whole parking lot up. Like, you better get the fuck up out of here. So me and Chris, we, I, I get Chris and I get my boy Andre. And we jump in my car. I, I left the gun home. But we go to Chris crib just to smoke. He, got, he, he go in the crib, get a bat. I'm like, yo, man, let me go get this strap. Ah, da, da. He like, nah, that's just smoke. So we sitting there smoking. It's snow on the ground up to your knees, bro. And I'm sitting in the whip, man. Chris in the back. My boy Andre next to me. My boy Dre got killed too, man. He got shot in his eye. Um, God bless his family. But we see niggas walking in t-shirts, man. With white t-shirts on. Back then, we had the t-shirts that came down to your fucking knees down there. It's cold. Snow on the ground. These niggas walking towards my car with t-shirts on. I'm like, bro, these niggas about to, these niggas, I ain't got my pistol. I'm in the car. And they walking on, and they coming to the point to where if you get out the, I'm like, oh shit, they about to, they about to, I'm, about, I'm slipping. I'm thinking in my head, like, they, I'm, I looked at Chris like, like, that's that, that's them niggas, bro. So this, Chris had heart, though. My nigga Chris jumped out the car with the bat. Because we was in front of his house. He like, what? At my crib? He jumped out the car with the bat. But they, they I guess the niggas was driving around looking for my car. Um... When he jumped out with the bat, man, I found out later them, them niggas was, could shoot, bro. Because they when he jumped out with the bat, all I heard, blah, blah, blah. He jumped back in the car. They shot him in the mouth that quick. Like He just jumped out, pop, pop. He jumped back in, shot in the mouth. Now I'm down by the floor. 
Andre is down by the floor too, but his door is open because he was going to jump out the car, but they started shooting towards his door. When I got out the car, the niggas aired the gas tank. I had a Granada though. They was trying to blow the car. They shot the gas tank like five times. But um, that Granada, that bitch was mad still. So um, I'm pressing the gas. Now this when God started working out, but that's what God saved me. And that's what my boy saved me, bro. My boy, Chris. Um, There's going to be a part two to this story that's really going to show. When God saved me the next time, even he knew. He was like, bro, you, he like, you protected because something happened to me before this. But I, so he shot in the mouth. I'm down. This is another God intervention right here also because I'm down on the car pressing the gas pedal, bro. And I'm steering without looking and I'm just pressing the gas pedal. And I got from Chris lived on. If you from Detroit, bro, I drove from like, I drove from North. I drove from Normal. Wait, um. I mean, I drove damn near, like, from Wyoming all the way to, man, to, like, Manor. I drove from Joy Road in Wyoming to about Manor in Chicago without looking. And I ended up, and when I looked up, I was directly at my boy house. My boy name was Jono. Everybody know Jono. He was one of the big money getters in the city. I'm at Jono crib, bro. It was me, Ernie, and Jono. We were the three closest. We were, like, everybody knew, like, G-Money, Ernie, and Jono. Them niggas always together. But um, I, I made it to that nigga crib without looking, man. I don't know how this shit happened. But I just knew I had to, I just knew this nigga wasn't about to die in my fucking car at that point. So I got out, we knocking on Jono's door. I, he ain't come to the door. I had to kick in his door to call the police to get an ambulance for this nigga. I didn't know why I did this. I was just like, bro, I got a, I got a towel. And I was like, sneeze, bro. And he sneezed and mad meat and blood came out his nose. Then I stuffed the towel in his mouth. And I, and I, and I just kept, then, then I told, um, John, I was with my girl Red. I was like, Red, get another. And I just kept making him sneeze. The nigga was sneezing up the shit from his mouth. And even when the ambulance came, they like, yeah, y'all saved his life. Saved my boy life, bro. But I think he saved my life first. Because if he didn't jump out that car, they would have came straight to me. Pop, pop, pop. They was about to tag me, bro. If he didn't jump out the car. And a salute to him, man. I never forgot him. I can't find him on Facebook or nothing. But, um, yeah, man. And at the end of all these stories, I want to insinuate, if that's the right word. I want to stress. Not insinuate, because insinuate means to say indirect. I want to stress. Look back at your life at the times God saved you, man. All this stuff we go through on the streets, bro. When God saved us from shit, man, it's not random, bro. There's two type of people, man. There's someone that'll walk in the street and almost get hit by a car and be like, oh, I'm lucky. And there's one person that'll be like, oh, wow, God, God got my back. That person is going to develop a faith that's going to empower them beyond their own strength. That's how you got to taste God. That's how you because I don't have the strength. I never had the strength to seek him a change. It was it's, it's his spirit that changes us. But you develop a faith to believe when you start believing a little at a time, the faith of a mustard seed. Just believe that, but you, but you got to recognize it. Um, Before I go, um, even the story of the burning bush, if you read, and I, I'm not trying to be preachy on my IG, but even the story of the burning bush, bro, read that. It's going to say God didn't, we, we know God spoke to Moses, but what, what it says, Exodus 3, it says God didn't speak until he noticed that Moses took time to look. He said when Moses turned aside to see, God called out to him from the midst. When Peter, remember Peter healed the man and Peter was like silver and gold I do not have, but what I have I give to you. And Peter healed him. Before Peter healed that man, Peter said, look at me. He told that man to look. Like recognize what's happening, nigga, so you don't think it's by chance. This is God in your, bro, life is deep. Love y'all, man, I'm out. I'm going to drop the first story to this. I'm going to tell y'all why he actually jumped out of the car for me, something that happened. To where he knew like God is protecting this man. He 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 he, he looked. Chris was a killer man, but me and him had a. He looked up to me, bro. I, I had killers that looked up to me. They'll tell me they they'll tell me their stories, bro. Hope y'all enjoyed this episode of Divine Intervention. Um, this is the Trustworthy Friend Part One. Part Two is very interesting. Um, I encourage you to check that out. Every every story has a message. And every message is just to take a look at your life and see where God has intervened in your life. Divine intervention. Salute. I'm out. Innovate.